Okay. I know you have all prepared well for your physics practical coming up on Tuesday, the 30th May. Now, I want to want I want to let you know is that if you have not mastered the art of plotting graph, then all what you have been doing since you have been in futility and may that not be a portion. Okay. So I want to bring to you that on this video on how to plot graph easily. Now, in this graph, you have seen that I have written the title of the graph, the graph of P in ampere per volt against arrow inverse powered ohm. So what that means is that we are plotting P against arrow inverse in this graph. Now, if you have been following my other videos, you would have seen where I have arrived at this value from my practical and manipulation that I carried out okay so we are plotting p against arrow inverse now this is what i'm going to do now to get now one of the problems that most students have is how to get a scale now look at this most especially for values that are so close like this and you are asked to start the graph from the origin zero zero how do you start values that are so close together they are, in fact, they are almost one, 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 one. The difference between is very small. So this is what I'm going to teach you today. Now let's look at this. This is 1.47. Okay? So you can either move this, just approximate this to be 1.5 and divide it by 10, or you just move the whole of this to 2. Which one you think is preferable should be okay with you. But I'll move this to 2. If I move this to 2, that means I'm, I'm assuming that this value is 2. So I'll just do 2. I'll divide it by 10. That gives me 0 0.2. What that means is that I am going to spread the whole of my value from here down to 10 places to get up to what? 2. So if this is 0, the origin, so this should be what? 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8, 1.0, 1 1.2, 1 1.4, 1 1.6, 1 1.8, and 2.0. So I'll spread that into 10 places. In fact, the scale, so this gives you me the scale on the vertical axis. So how do I write that? Just come to this place and write the scale here. So this is my scale. P axis, 2 cm to 0 0.2 ampere per volt. Please do not write unit here. Do not use don't say 2 cm to so 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 and so unit. No, it's wrong. Because there is a unit for this. The unit is ampere per volt. So you have to state that there. And again, do not say why as is. Either state the value that you are, the quantity that you are asked to plot on the vertical as it put it there, or you use the vertical as it instead. You can say on the vertical as is, horizontal as is. Okay. Now, why did I say 2 cm? Remember that the gap between this and this is 2 cm. So they are 2 cm each. So that's why I said 2 cm. To 0 0.2 watt volts uh, ampere watt per volt now the next thing you have to do is to get a scale factor your scale factor is this now look at this remember that the distance the numerical value between this and this is 0 0.2 as stated here then you count the number of small bus when you count numbers where they are exactly 10 so you divide this by 10 that's going to give us 0 0.0 watt 2 so this is my scale factor on the horizon you can just write it somewhere with a pencil this is my scale factor, and this is vertical as is, on the vertical as is, and this is my horizontal. So let's get the scale for the horizontal. In fact, this is perfect because the highest value here is 0 0.5. So let's see. What you have to do now is this. If I use 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, see that the graph will be so small. So let's do this. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5, which is going to be enough. So I'll go... 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, and 0 0.5. You have to put this, uh, what you are plotting there. So what am I plotting there? I am plotting arrow inverse in per ohm. So you can put it here if there is space. If there is no space, just put it underneath this. Now you have to choose the scale factor again. Now look at this. The numerical value occupying this is 0 0.1. So you're going to write 0 0.1 divided by now. Count the number of small buses. Obviously, this is 20. This is 10 plus 10. That's 20. 
So you divide that by 20, and that will give us 0 0.005. So this is my horizontal uh, scale factor. Now, this is what I'm going to do to make my work easier. This value here, I'll just convert them using the scale factor. So let's do it somewhere so that you can do it on your uh, your question paper just with a pencil so this is p here and arrow inverse here. this is what i'm going to do my scale factor for this is 0 0.02 so just come to this place and press 1.47 divided by 0 0.02 that gives me 73.5 i'll write it down let me do it for all of this so i'll go 1.18 divided by 0 0.02 that's 59 I'll put it here. I'll go for the next one. 1. 1.10 divided by 0. 0.02. That gives me 55. Put it down there. Then I'll go for 1.07 divided by 0. 0.02. That gives me 53.5. And I'll go for 1.02. 1.02 divided by 0. 0.02. That gives me exactly 51 so now let's go to this other part so i have 0 0.50 0 0.50 is there 0 0.5 divided by my scale factor is 0 0.055 0 0.005 that gives me 100 so i have 100 then i'll go for the other one 0 0.2 divided by 0 0.005 that gives me 40 then 0 0.143 divided by 0 0.05 that gives me 28.6 then i'll go for the next one 0 0.1 divided by 0 0.005 that gives me 20 then i'll go for the last one 0 0.083 divided by 0 0.005 that gives me 16.6 okay now i will have this i'm going to leave this now this is what i'm going to use to plot my guy you can see that this one that is 100 is for 0 0.055 you can in fact you can easily get 0 0.5 from here but let's see whether it works let's start to count this is 10 20 30 40 50 60 sorry this is 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 100 which is exactly the same as this so you see it the scale factor will help you to mark out the point without stress so let's plot the point so now i'm going to plot 73.5 against 100 How, what do i mean just go to 100 here this is my 100 here and count 73.5 up or this smaller boss if I, this is 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 80 90 100 70 71 72 73.5 put a dot here and circle it now let's go to the next one 59 for 40 so let's go 10 20 30 10 20 30 40 so we are going 59 upward so go 10 20 30 40 50 60 59 put a dot here next let's go to the next one we are going 55 for 28.6 so come to this place i count 28 but this is 10 20 30 this is 28.6 just use your discretion i put it at the middle so we are going how many places 55 off but so this is 10 20 30 40 50 51 52 53 54 55 Put a dot here and say, oh, please do not use a pen. I'm using a pen so that it will be clear. Use a pencil. Now, let's go to the next one. We are going 20. Okay, we have done that. And the last one is 46. Okay, we are going for 20. 20 for 53.5. So, this is 10, 20. And we are going 53.5. So let's go 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 51, 52, 53, 
0.5 should be at the middle here. So put a dot here and circle it. Okay. Now let's go for 16.6. So this is 10. This is 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16.6 should be somewhere at the middle. And we are going 51 places upward. 51 places upward. So let's go. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 51. Put a dot here. So as simple as this, I have been able to mark out my point. So the next thing you have to do is to determine the line of best fit. Draw a line of best fit on any three of these such that one will be up and one will be down. Now, if you look at this, if I draw through this, okay, you see that this one is up and this one here is down, but it touches this, this, and this. It's not compulsory that it must pass through the center. It can touch any part of it. So it's going to touch this, this, and this. Why this one is down and this one is up? It's okay. So these three separate these two into two equal. So I'll just draw my line through this. So now this is my line of best fit. Can you see it now? This one is down. This one is up and it touches these three. So the next you have to do is to draw a triangle through this, a large triangle through this. But you see that the graph is not that slopey. So what I'm going to do, let me draw my line of best fit from this point. Oh, sorry, my slope. I'll draw it down to this other side. Let me draw that. So I'm going to have this. Place this on top of this. Okay, let me use this point. Okay. Here. Okay. Then I'll draw this downward. So this is this. now let's determine the slope so i'm going to do this x is equal to now to determine the slope it's still going to be simple as simple as what i did before so come to this place this is the point i want to read count this this is 10 20 30 40 50 60 70 okay sorry let me count that again this is 10 20 30 40 50 60, 61, 62, 63, 64, 65, 66, 67, 68. So you are going to write 68. 68. 68. Then multiply it by our vertical scale factor, 0 0.02. So let me work that out. So I'm going to have 68 times 0 0.02. That's going to give me 1.36. So I'm going to write it here now. 1.36 minus now come to this other part here yeah, count it again this is 10 20 30 40 50 51 52 so we are going to multiply 52 again by 0 0.02 so i have 52 times 0 0.02 that gives me 1.04 so i have 1.04 divided by now let's come to this place we already know what this point is this is 0 0.5. So I have 0 0.5 minus. Now let's come to this other part. So this is the part it touches this point here. This point here. That's the point. So just count. This is 1, 2, 3. So we are going to have 3 times our scale factor for horizontal is what? 0 0.005. 0 0.005. So let me multiply that. So I have 3 times 0 0.005. 5 that gives me 0 0.015 0 0.015 so let's work this out so this is going to give us 1.36 minus 1.04 that gives me 0 0.32 all over so let's do the 0 0.5 minus 0 0.015 that gives me 0 0.485 so when i divide i'm going to have 0 0.32 divided by 0 0.485 that gives me 0 0.66 0 0.66 now so this is my value 0 0.66 so 
So that's my slope.